Hello everyone, it's New Dion and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching my testimonial video about me uh, suffering from epilepsy for 19 years, but now I am epilepsy free and it's going on five years. Yay! <laughs> yes, um, I thank God every day and now I'm doing a video on how I healed um, how I healed from epilepsy and I hope and pray that it can help at least one person touch at least one epilepsy person to let them know that there is a such thing as healing from epilepsy I've been there for 19 years and I'm here to help whoever I can to get to where I'm at with healing so the things that you'll need first things first is a Bible I believe in God that's my religion. No one can take it from me or turn it <laughs> any other way around. I believe in God. So reading my Holy Bible, it taught me a lot about epilepsy and it helped heal me. Spending more time with God. And secondly, <laughs> you need bananas. <laughs> okay, banana is an amazing muscle and nerve fruit that it helps takes the pain away. After we have a seizure, our nerves are in pain. Wherever our seizures end, my seizure used to end on my left hand and on my left side of my body. So without bananas, um, my, my left side will swell up and like literally get stiff as if I'm a 90 year old woman. <laughs> you know, I'm able to laugh about it because I found out that bananas and other fruits really helps with our nervous system so let's get started so in 2015 in october that's when i first found out that um i had a ep that i had epilepsy all along so i had bought my first car a dodge neon and i'm driving and i just got home i'm just driving home from work and um I'm, i stopped to get gas and i was just praying like god just just get me home safely but God still made sure I was um, good. So with the car accident, I was driving down the block and um, I passed out through, through a seizure. Thank God I didn't hit no one or end up dead from that. But God took my car and he put it, um, this is my car and then it's a tree right here. And he basically pushed my car up against the tree and it flipped over. And two guys end up <laughs> busting out my window and dragging me out that car. And I thank them guys. I don't know them personally, but I thank them for doing that because that really helped save my life. And I know God is watching over them every day. Thank you. So I'm in the hospital trying to figure out, you know, how did this car accident happen? I'm not on drugs. <laughs> I don't drink. What's going on? So they, the doctor's doing all these tests, and my stepmother, she finally had graduated from nursing school, and she had to yell at the doctor and tell them to do an EEG on me. This lady is in college. Why didn't the doctor automatically think to do that since I'm not on drugs? Anywho, <laughs> thank God we still found out. They ran the EEG, and then it was epilepsy. So I was at peace, but I finally had to cope with what I was suffering from. So I always prayed for it, and then at the age of 19, God gave it to me in October. So um, the doctors prescribed to me Keppra. Keppra, 500 milligrams, 500 in the morning, 500 at night. So they told me, too, that you cannot drive for at least six to eight months. And that was a little little scared to know, but I understand because I didn't want to put my life at risk nor either one else's life on risk driving with epilepsy. So six to eight months, I'm stuck in the house. I can't drive. Uh, I feel like I'm in prison. So I kept praying harder and harder because it was a little tad bit depressing because I'm stuck on this medicine that's taking my uh, personality away from me and it's knocking me out <laughs> like I'm sleeping all day barely can breathe off a of Keppra 500 milligrams 
So I'm trying to understand. I'm like, God, I don't want this to be my daily life for years. So something is going to have to move. Like, I can't be, you know, not being able to show my personality, my happiness, my goofy side, you know, just being me. So I sat down and I was able to, um, to figure out the things that I really, really want to do in life and the passion that I truly had in life. So I ended up um, Googling and looking up uh, makeup because I always love makeup. It's come natural. It brings me happiness. And I can watch that day up to day down about anything that regards beauty. I love skin. So I did Google research and <laughs> esthetician popped up. Yay, that's me. Okay. <laughs> government licensed esthetician so um in june 2016 i started uh to go to cosmetology school and i was like wow like thank you god like this is something that i've been looking for that i've been craving that i've been having a passion for and i'm finally able to go after it so it's a six-month program and during that six months i'm learning beauty I also had to skip a couple of days um, for my doctor's office, which sucked. <laughs> but, you know, your health comes first, no matter what. So, um, as I'm in cosmetology school, I noticed that, you know, some of my classmates are saying things that's funny. And I'm literally stuck, like, with a straight face. Things that I think is funny, I can't even laugh because the Kepra was taking over my personality. And I was not able to be myself. And I really, really, really disliked that. You know, it was like I couldn't be mad. I couldn't be happy. Couldn't be sad. I was just bland off of that medicine. But it was helping my electro activity be normal. So I thank God for that. So while I'm in beauty school, um, I was, thank God, I was still able to focus and get good grades and play catch up because in a six month program that's really really hard when you miss one day one day feel like a week of work <laughs> that's how it is in in beauty school is no joke because right after the six month program you able to do your state board exam and have a government license professional okay <laughs> so yeah as i'm on this 500 milligram kepper pill in the morning and that night after I graduated, I started to get really sad and, told, and I talked to God and I prayed that, you know, I do not want to be on this pill when it's time for me to be with my boyfriend, my future husband, and create a family. I don't want them to know me, this blank personality that just stares in the air. I want them to know the happy side of me, the frustrated side, the understanding side, the ambition side. You know, just me all around. I did not want to appeal to stop my personality or love and um, realness, you know. I did not want a pill to stop me from that. So I started to pray. Every time I popped the pill in the morning and every time I popped it at night. Now, remember, I popped my, my Kepper pills on time. I did not play with that. I do not play with my health. When your neurologist tell you to do something, please do it. And then if you don't get the results you need, then ask questions and go to a different doctor. And um, my neurologist, Dr. Hafiz, he told me to always take it on time. You won't have nothing to worry about. And that's what I did. So for the whole year 2016, um, I just kept praying. I'm like, there is no way I'm going to be... <laughs> on Kepra for the rest of my life that there, there's no way I'm like in the future I want to be able to breastfeed and you cannot breastfeed on them pills so I started praying sun up to sundown I am a woman that believes in God and prayer works that's how I end up getting healed so right before I took my state board exam you know because I was very very nervous I prayed that God will show me in the Bible where it talks about epilepsy. If I know it's in the Bible and God talks about epilepsy, I know for a fact I can heal and not have to worry 
about this for the rest of my life. Because I'm like, there's no way that God created me and had me go through this for 19 years to go through it my entire life. Like, there's just no way. The Bible scripture that talks about epilepsy is Matthew 17. That Bible scripture really, really touched me and opened up my third eye to let me know that there is hope. But epilepsy exists because there's so many stubborn people. When God said they're stubborn people, there's basically people who do not pray to God. They rather talk to people rather than talking to God, or they rather ask several million people what's going on instead of asking God what's going on. The Bible verse, Matthew 17, is here because it's too many people here on earth that are too stubborn to talk to God. Now, both of my parents, they changed their life around. And, but while they conceived me and was raising me as a little toddler, they were both stubborn. Stubborn creatures, and we know a stubborn person. But all that stubbornness, God is saying, if you just let back and talk to me, you won't be frustrated. You won't be mad all the time. You won't be anxious or after negativity if you just talk to God. So... That really, really helped me understand. And a, <laughs> a lot of my family members were stubborn. And I'm like, wow, that's a little bit of why I suffered for 19 years. You know, people thinking that maybe they know everything or thinking it's not a big of a deal when it it is. Because if you are around, if you having seizures and you yourself do not believe in God and you are surrounded by people that don't believe in God, more than likely, you're going to be deceased. So, all of my people that have epilepsy, please, please try to get to know God if you do not believe. And most importantly, if you have a hard time believe, have people around you that have faith in God that will pray over you that you trust, that you trust with all your heart. That they will speak good into your life and pray goodly and godly into your life. That's what us epilepsy people need. And that's what helped heal me. The closer, the more I was talking to God, all those 19 years of suffering, I still talk to God. That's how you end up being healed. When doctors cannot heal you, God is the last resort to heal you. And I'm a living testimony that it is true. <laughs> New Dion me right here new day new you that's me dion <laughs> god gave me gave me steps as i was praying for healness while i'm on kepra and while i'm steady you know seeing my neurologist he told me my first step was to get rid of any stubborn people that's in my life or in my surroundings that stubbornness is not good for people that have epilepsy. Basically, people that surround you that talk negative all the time or talk as if you can't do something or talk as if things cannot happen for the better of you, get away from them. You need people that believe and have faith. <laughs> you know, I cannot stress this enough. As soon as I got rid of all the people that were stubborn and wanted to play mental mind games, I did. <laughs> Ghost, <laughs> deuces, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I don't have time for that. My health is more important than how you feeling for, for a couple of hours or whatever. But yeah, that was the first step, getting rid of stubborn people and also making sure that I'm not stubborn. I thank God for that, okay? <laughs> God's second step with um, healing me from epilepsy, um, he told me that after he takes away the seizures for good, I have to know that there will be some damages left. <laughs> and what he means by that is that wherever your seizures landed, during uh, my menstrual cycle, when it's coming around that time, if I don't have enough potassium in my system, my ankle will swell up, um, my leg will get super, super stiff, and it will hurt to walk. 
Now, the first time that happened to me, um, I was working at Macy's and an Arabic woman came and we just vibed and we talked and you know she was telling me her flaws and I was telling her my flaws and what I was going through and I had told her like look at my ankle like I'm in my 20s and it's swole and I had told her my epilepsy story and she was like wait let me make one phone call for you so she called um, her son that's a pharmacist and he told me right off the back Make sure you eat a banana every single day. Make sure you have avocado. Make sure you have brain food. Make sure you have whole grain food. Right then and there, God had blessed me because I was praying for it. You never know who God will bring, it to, will bring you in your life to let you know something that is important and that you need. I was so thankful for that woman and for God blessing me that day with so much knowledge to where I didn't have to go and spend money for a, you know, a doctor visit. <laughs> God did it for me right then and there. And I'm thankful for that Arabic lady and her family helping me. Because that really brought me a lot of hope and faith. Like, wait, I don't have to go through this pain. I don't have to worry <laughs> about my muscles and nerves hurting and swelling up. All I have to do is make sure I eat a banana a day and take uh, potassium vitamins whenever I don't feel like eating a banana but you can eat about nine bananas a day so don't let nobody tell you that bananas will kill you not the epilepsy people we have nerve damage we need a banana okay we need it <laughs> the third step that God um, gave me in order to heal from epilepsy he told me straight up Whoever you want to be with in your life and grow with and build with, your husband, he has to be able to put me first. And what he means by that, uh, for instance, if things go wrong, you know, with your health, do you have a partner that's going to pray for you and have faith? Or do you have a partner that's not going to care and just say, do I need to call the ambulance? You know? It's different type of people out here. And God told me that you need a man that's going to be humble and that's going to put me first. That way your health will always be in good health because you will have a man that you don't have to worry about. <laughs> that's, you know, that at the time it was a hard heart pill because I kept getting bad eggs <laughs> thrown at me. But God was saying, continue to have faith. As long as you continue to focus on yourself. I'm going to focus on healing you and guiding you. That's how God works. All of my epilepsy people, if you are dating someone right now and they do not believe in God, they do not have a close communication with God, and they like to play mental games with you, I'm telling you, get away from them. They are putting your health at a higher risk. We don't need physical pain. Sometimes our pain could be with, you know, people being stubborn, acting like they know something and they don't know it. Or they leading you in the wrong direction, telling you lies. God, our, our spirit is a gift when we have epilepsy. We see God's light before anybody else. That's why he gave us epilepsy. And that's something you have to know and figure out. That's why, you know, we can have too much sunlight <laughs> or too many camera flashes in our eyes because God's saying they have enough light, honey. They see me good enough. <laughs> they just need, we just don't need people around us that's going to dim God's light or dim your own light. Get away from them. They're no good. Say, call, call the deuces and tell them, I don't know where you got to go. But you got to get the hell away from me. Okay? My life is too precious to be around your negativity. That's the number one thing. It's kind of a hard pill because it's, you realize it's a lot of people besides the person that you dating that you need to get rid of. But as soon as you get rid of, your health is going to be even better and even more ready to be healed. <laughs> now fast forward to 2017. Um, my New Year's resolution, I asked God, you know, what should it be? And he told me 
it's time to start knowing and thinking and feeling that you are healed from epilepsy. He was like, remember you was crying to me last year saying that you didn't want to be on these pills anymore. Now it's time to have to put your mental in the position where you don't need the pills anymore. And I'm like, you know, God, how do I do this? Because now my body is um, relying on Capra. And I was scared. I'm like, if I stop taking this Capra, I don't want to risk having a seizure again. And God is saying, where is your faith? <laughs> he said, just do one thing. Just keep saying it every day and night. I am healed from epilepsy. This is this is not my last resort. I will not forever live with epilepsy. While I'm here on this earth, I will be healed. I will experience the normal, healthy body that God created me. I will not have to deal with seizures anymore. So as he was training me to say those things, it was actually helping my confidence in knowing that I won't have to deal with epilepsy for the rest of my life. You know, it was very, very different. But all my life, I follow God, and I will continue no matter what, and he knows that. That's why he gave me my promise of being healed from epilepsy, even after being misdiagnosed for 19 years, okay? That's my God. Um, as I was popping the pills, 500 milligrams in the morning, 500 milligrams at night, same time, I kept saying, I'm healed from epilepsy. I kept speaking into existence. I no longer have seizures. I am seizure free. I was crying while saying it, but I had to speak into existence in order to be free from seizures for five years now and continually, you know, which is a blessing and I'm thankful. And I want other people that deals with epilepsy to start changing their mind frame and understanding that this isn't your final destination. As long as you have faith and believe in God, it whatever you want will come. It's the truth. I'm a living testimony of it. Look at me. Seizure free. Thank you, God. Thank you. So, um, now we're still in 2017, and I believe the summertime came, and my neurologist um he had told me he was like hey i have some good news for you and i'm like what what could possibly be good like right now and he told me that you no longer need to be on capra and it was like a dream come true him telling me that and him being a doctor that believe in god he was willing to tell me that because, you know, a lot of doctors in America, they just want to make money off of pills. They don't want to tell you that you healed and you no longer need that blood pressure pill or whatever pill they prescribe. But I was thankful and blessed to have a neurologist that put God first no matter what and to let people know when they don't need a medication anymore and when they do need it. Thank you. So he told me that and I had said, I was like, what if I, you know, don't feel comfortable you know not being on it anymore because I was scared that my body was going to have some type of rejection from uh just stop taking the pills and he told me just slowly um like how I was taking two pills he said start taking one a day and then slow down and take a half a pill and then he said after the half a pill you should be able to stop and I was like oh you know still don't know still scared and uh, he told me also to uh, watch my diet. <laughs> you know, a lot of doctors say that, but it's the truth. He told me to eat. I used to eat like three big meals a day because I hated to snack. And he said, you have to break that habit. He said, eat a little bit. And then you feel you hungry. Wait an hour. Wait at least an hour. And then see if you're hungry again. And I was like, do I really have to do this? And he said, yes, you know, <laughs> that's the relationship that we built. And he told me to exercise. He told me that exercising is my best friend, fruits and vegetables, and eat things in a smaller portion. And my body will continue to heal itself from epilepsy. I was so thankful. And I was like, wow, now I have to put in the physical work <laughs> 
you know, I already put in the mental work and the speaking it into existence. Now I have to put in the physical work of getting off the medicine, plus changing my diet, plus, uh, put, you know, just making better health decisions for me in general once it's time to stop the pill completely. So, as time going on, um, I'm going through a Ray Charles phase, okay, y'all? <laughs> I stopped the pill for like just one day and I noticed like my nerves was just a little jumpy and I'm like what's going on you know my grandmother always taught me to pay attention to my body so I'm paying attention to one pill then as time goes on I'm like oh I'm tired of taking this one pill you know mentally telling myself that so I'm like let me just break a pill so my first time breaking the half a pill and taking that for a day of the Keppra I'll never forget I woke up and a cold cold sweat like I was on crack y'all <laughs> it's like at the time it wasn't funny but now I'm able to laugh at it but I was waking up in cold sweat sweating my body was jumping as I was falling asleep and I was so depressed and it was all because my uh, the Kepper had codeine in it and a whole bunch of other prescription that make you addicted to the pill you know this is my first time ever taking op opioids or narcotics and my body is acting totally different and I'm like what what kind of stuff is this like why wouldn't nobody tell me that my body is gonna feel like I was on crack <laughs> so as I'm going through all of that I'm like I have to find some research something better that's going to help me get off these pills because my body is acting like it just can't do it like mentally i'm i'm prepared but my body is showing me it's not prepared to get off the the capra so i did some research and i found um dr boob <laughs> i love that name i found him and i told him my situation and what i was going through and how i it was time for me to get off the pills and he prescribed marijuana to me now I know a lot of you people in America y'all talk down on marijuana but God created it for people like us that have epilepsy and other diseases if you do your research you'll be a little bit more mature when it comes to weed and not so judgmental you know everybody doesn't do it for the fun of it a lot of people do it to help them you know and also too if y'all read the Bible Mary is in the Bible and she's the one that God created to grow uh, natural herbs and vegetables and fruits to help heal people. And she always said that God said do not eat too much of anything because too much of anything is bad for you. So let's think that instead of just putting marijuana as if it's crack. Because a lot of you is on cigarettes, sniffing, you know, shooting yourself and nobody is putting you on the front line so please do not judge somebody that smokes marijuana like you need to mature <laughs> in that area no matter what age you are do your research and you will know that marijuana is a healer okay you know by marley that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> my first prescription of marijuana <laughs> i was super excited because dr boob let me know that it was here to help me and gave me all the information that I needed so my first time trying to like for people that don't need marijuana you're not gonna feel the same thing that somebody feels that needs it so my body like my nerves is calming down from the Keppra um you know my body is basically saying thank you thank you thank you like this is what we always needed and also too there's different um I should say like levels of marijuana like some people don't have to smoke you can do CBD oils you could take that or you know whatever you are comfortable with there's different forms of marijuana all of it you don't have to have in a bud so I was so so happy that as soon as I <laughs> got my prescription for marijuana I had to learn how to balance it to know when my body really needs it and that's when you pay attention to your body and I'm thankful <laughs> it really really helped me brought me back to life and to help me figure out the new me 
the healed me. You know, I was just falling in love with myself 10 times more than before. And I thank God for that experience, <laughs> you know, and uh, some people need to know that if you don't want to pop a pill, you can have marijuana with epilepsy. It's, it's videos out here showing that kids having seizures and they put CBD oil in the kids in the kid mouth while foaming and it instantly stops. You know, that's how God is able to easily come and heal. You may not physically see him, but, you know, people, there is a such thing as being healed. And I need a lot of people to understand that. So if you do have epilepsy, I would highly, highly recommend that you go and get a marijuana license and show whatever doctor that you can, you know, your medical record, and you can get back to your better health. Remember, better health isn't always pills. You see what I had to go through getting off of Keppra. That was traumatizing, getting off of it, <laughs> you know. I hope that I hit all the key notes that I needed, explaining my journey and how I healed from epilepsy. And last but not least, us people with epilepsy, we love music. So music too is like my getaway. When nothing else is working, my banana... <laughs> And my music always works for me. And I thank you guys for tuning in and watching my video. And I'm thankful for all the support and all the love that I've been getting. And I will continue to share what I learned from epilepsy. If there's any questions that you have, please put it in the comment section. And I will happily <laughs> tell you guys my experience or what I know or my journey. And I will be uploading every Sunday, so please tune in every Sunday to see me, okay? Hey! <laughs> Healed from epilepsy, and I thank you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.